us close out this worship part of the service. I, I just want you to reach out to God right where you are. So, some of you are needing a miracle today. Some of you are needing God to move in a, in a way that maybe no one else understands or sees or knows, but you, you feel it. I just want to ask you as, you, as we sing this song that's just as chorus through, would you just reach your hands towards the Lord and just ask Him for that miracle today and believe that he, if He's the breath in your lungs, there's nothing that's too hard for Him. Amen? Nothing is too hard. Just ask Him for a miracle today and just, just reach out to Him. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Yeah. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath. It's your breath in our lungs. So we You are great. Great are you, Lord. Lord, we believe there's nothing too hard for you, no mountain that you cannot move. Great. Great are you, Lord. Our faith, our hope, our trust is in you, oh God. Sing, great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. One more time, say. Great are you, Lord. Yes. Just let the music play for a moment. Oh, Lord, we just thank you the breath in our lungs. Every breath is a gift from you. And Lord, we want to do our best with the breath that you give us to return our praise to you. Not just with the songs that we sing or the words that we speak, but with the life that we live, the thoughts that we have. We want, oh God, the way that we live our life to, with all of our strength to give you glory, to give you honor, to give you praise. I pray, oh God, this morning for those that are needing a miracle in whatever way that is for them. We ask you, Lord, to move in their lives. We ask you, Lord, to move in miraculous ways, to bring healing, to bring freedom, to bring deliverance, to, to, to bring a, a, a lifting of depression and anxiety. Oh, Lord, we, we pray, oh God, that you will bring healing in relationships. And, Lord, you will help those that are struggling to forgive, to forgive to supernaturally, be able to let it go but also to receive the forgiveness that they need in their lives as well. Do what only you can do, Lord. And we just want to give you praise. We just want to declare you are good. And you are greatly to be praised. We love you so much. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just thank him. Thank him for that miracle that you've asked him for. Thank him for the provision that you need in your life. Thank him that nothing is too hard for him. We give you praise, oh God. We give you praise. We give you praise. In Jesus' name.
Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Can you give God a shout of praise this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, turn to somebody near you and say, hey, it's good to see you today. Amen. 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 Tell them they look well rested, like they got extra sleep or something. <laughs> Amen. I, I, I don't know what y'all did last night, but I went to bed at normal time. I made my mind to do that. And so normally, I, I, I'm, I'm usually up around six or so. It's kind of my normal getting up time. And this morning, I didn't get up. It was, it was seven o'clock, but it was actually eight o'clock because I'd gained an hour. So it's like, man, I got this big lie in. It was wonderful. So hopefully you got that as well. So uh, amen. It's good to see you this morning. Uh, just a couple things I want to mention real quick, and then um, Josh is going to come talk about our Christmas outreach, and uh, Kevin's going to do some things as well. Uh, today is officially the day for the to pray for the persecuted church. Um, so always the second or first Sunday in November. Um, so I uh, just want to I do want to lead on a prayer for the persecuted church. We have missionaries, by the way, that are involved and engaged in the persecuted church. Y'all got to meet Karim. Uh, if you didn't know him already, a couple weeks back, uh, that's exactly where he's going. And I don't know that he he didn't talk as much as I was hoping he would about all the places he's he's been. But he goes to the Middle East every month to a different country. Um, and puts himself in harm's way in an ongoing basis. And God is doing some great things. Um, he, he asked me while I was, he was in for us to kind of get more involved with those churches. And I don't know how much more we can do, but it, it, what an opportunity to be a part of what God's doing uh, in some difficult places. So um, also, of course, um, we, we have India, which we have Yakin and Joshi that we support that are in India, and also TL and Miriam. There's three that we support in India. Um, and then we have... Chile and um, trying to remember what's that? Ghana. Ghana, thank you. Ghana, I can't see it from here. Uh, Egypt, the Philippines, um, and what's the one on the end there? North Korea. North Korea, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I, I, I still do that every Sunday. I put four dollars in for a North Korean Bible, I buy 52 North Korean Bibles a year. I love that. Um, so you can do that. You can add that to your offering and just put that in. Just mark it North Korea. Four dollars will translate a Bible into North Korean. And there are people, it's not just translating the Bible. There are people that are carrying those Bibles in somehow across that line to bring those Bibles to people in North Korea. Um, and four dollars will help you be a part of that. So um, I, I, I get such joy in writing that in my check every every week um, to be a part of that each week so uh, all these places that we're involved with we are supporting we are want to praying for them and for others this morning uh, also i know that um and josh is going to talk about a christmas outreach but just one update as far as the homeless ministry um we are collecting items now till christmas um for hats gloves blankets sleeping bags we, we've got a couple sleeping bags in the back there already um but we're also planning a dinner and have we got it set the Sunday before Christmas, Sunday evening before Christmas, and we're thinking like soups and chilies and things like that. Okay. So chicken noodle soup and ham sandwiches. So anybody knows how to do that. So uh, please talk to Tina about that. That'll be the Sunday evening before Christmas. We're going to go to Haven of Rest and serve uh, the homeless down there uh, and just bless them at Christmas time. So I think that's pretty exciting. Amen? Yeah. Amen. I know that's close to Christmas. For some of you, there'll be things going on, but try to make room for that in your calendar. Help cook, help serve, uh, just you know, be a part of that in some way. Um, so, uh, and, and the only other thing I wanted to mention, and I shared it, uh, I think I shared it on the church Facebook page. I can't remember. I know I shared it within the app. Uh, but there is a ride for Jaden uh, going on this Saturday, uh, put on by um, the um, fire department, I believe, in Damascus. Is putting that on, and, it's, and if you've got a motorcycle and want to be part of that, I don't. Um, but you can ride all the way from Bristol through Shady Valley, and it ends up in Glade Spring at the farmers market. Um, so if you don't want to ride, you can always come at two o'clock in the afternoon, join there, or you can still give and help with the expenses for that service. It's 
still quite a bit lacking for that. So um, if you can give to that. I'll, I'll share that if I haven't already on the church Facebook page and again on the app so that you can see where to give to that as well. Or you can give to the church uh, and just label it for Jaden. And, um, and we will make sure that gets to the family. So uh, amen. Josh, I think you're going to come and give us some more information. So we appreciate Josh so much. Would you give this man of God a big hand as he comes? All right. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, so we do have, we have a bunch of stuff that we are doing for Christmas. <laughs> um, and honestly, uh, that's, I really think that's wonderful, uh, especially around that you know, Christmas season. Uh, so many people have such a hard time, uh, whether it's just because of, you know, what's going on in their lives or, you know, just the simple fact that some of them aren't around family anymore or don't have family to begin with, whatever. And so I think it's wonderful that we're able to reach out and do so many things. Um, I would encourage everybody, uh, whenever it comes to going and, and doing the, the, the meal, um, it's going to be a blessing. Uh, I know a few years ago we took the youth up to New York to serve at a soup kitchen up there and it was a great blessing to be able to reach out to people to help people and to be able to you know just experience a little bit of God's work you know that's one of the things Jesus even did <laughs> was was feed people and so you know it's just a little bit of that and you know just helping others so uh, we do have uh, a sign-up sheet for Adopting kids for the Santa's elves. I'll pass this around again. We passed it around last week, but if you didn't happen to get on there, uh, I would just encourage you, you know, to to pick somebody. Um, you get the opportunity if you want to to deliver these yourself. Um, I know the last couple of years that we've done this, uh, I've delivered several uh, of the packages, and although not all, but most of the people that you encounter are so grateful for the fact that you are bringing something for their kids. There are several of them that I've talked to. That was all that their kids were going to get. They didn't have the ability to get them anything for Christmas. So if it wouldn't have been for the fact of having those gifts, the kids wouldn't have had anything, you know, and it's not about so much the present for us. Really what it is, is just us giving and showing Christ's light. You know, showing the giving nature that God himself has. So I just encourage you, sign up for that. Um, you know, it's kind of broken up to where, you know, you can choose however many kids you want. You can do one, you can do 50, whatever you want to do. You know, um, I will be getting these names to uh, social services uh, probably tomorrow um, and be getting information back from them as far as you know clothing sizes and you know the things that the kids like and stuff like that and I will get that back to you guys uh, on a basis of whatever you signed up for so that's going to be there uh, we do have the thing with men with a vision uh, they do that every year I've participated in that for uh, almost 12 13 years now I think and I know uh, Eddie he's did it for several years before that but um that also is a great blessing because again that one's not just toys that's food as well um and so you know giving to that you know trying to get toys together that's usually what they're always needing is is the toys especially for younger kids um so i would encourage you, if you can do that uh if you can go and help out Whenever it comes time, usually uh, the Saturday before Christmas is usually when they'll do the distribution. And the week before that, usually starting around Tuesday or Wednesday, is when they start packing up all the food boxes and wrapping the, the presents and everything like that. It's a great time. There's usually hot chocolate and cookies and all kinds of good stuff like that, too. So good time of fellowship. So uh, we have that. Um, I know... So what? Oh, yes. Legos for India. Um, with that one, you can either go ahead and get some or you can, what is it, just going on to uh, ordering them off of... 
give on the app? Okay. So you can give on the app. Uh, just make sure you mark it in the app that it's going to be for Legos for India, and that's basically going to TL and the, all the work that he does there. Uh, he has a lot of kids in his, his home that he's taking care of, and I don't blame him. I love Legos, too. So, you know, that's just kind of one of those things. That, that's, yeah. <laughs> that, that's just one of those things that, you know, kids love so yeah it'd be a blessing to them be a blessing to him so i encourage you for that as well and then i know we're going to be doing some stuff around the church as well as far as with the kids with the play and and everything so is that what is that practice starts is it this week or next today so if the kids are going to be involved in that we're going to have that as well so as i said there's a whole bunch of stuff i know we usually have our our candlelight services and all that stuff and it's just going to be a great time of year. I always love Christmas. I always love, you know, getting together with all this and, and just really showing who God is, spending time with one another. That's really what it's about. So those are the Christmas updates as of right now. Uh, and I guess Brother Kevin, Pastor Kevin, is going to be next, giving us uh, all the rest of the stuff, offering and all that good stuff. So let's give it up for Kevin. Before I get started, I believe Julian, did you have an announcement you wanted to make? All right, give a hand for Julian. <laughs> okay, so you'll have to bear with me. I'm a little anxious talking in front of people. So um, we are wanting to do an art show for the children of the church so if you are interested in having your child make a piece of artwork to hang up we're going to do the christmas event is december 12th right december 12th so we would like to ideally hang up all of the kids artwork to be on show for the christmas event so that way they can show off their artwork and everybody can see what they're doing all that kind of stuff so if you have a child that would like to submit artwork um, I'd ideally like to have it the Tuesday before, which I think is the 7th, So, because we want to label it and frame it and hang it up and make it really nice for the kids so that way they can show off their artwork and stuff like that. So, And then the second part, we have something we'd like to give you, Pastor Matthew, if that's okay, if you'd like to come up here. <laughs> and then also uh, Cherish and Kevin and Pam, we also have stuff for you guys as well, but personally... Oh, no, that's okay. Well, then we're making a whole new Pastor Matthew Appreciation Month for November then. <laughs> but so if you guys want to go ahead, um, we also need Kevin, Pam, and Cherish. If everyone would like to come up here, we have some stuff to give you. But personally, we wanted to give you, um, sorry, <laughs> this photo. Oh, no, that's cool. We wanted to have everyone sign it. Because we wanted you to know that we know your journey is not completely over yet, but we're always here for you. And so that you can look at this and it reminds you of how much support you have through us and that you don't have to carry things alone, that we're here to carry it with you. So we love you so much. That's really cool. Thank you. <laughs> so and then we have mums for you guys and there's gift cards. We, everyone donated very generously and we have date night gift cards for you guys. So you guys can go on date night and enjoy those. We have our cards. And then we also have rocks that the children painted for you guys because you guys rock. <laughs> so there are three rocks for each of you guys. And you guys can put them in your garden or wherever you want to do that. So, And we just wanted to extend that to you guys because we appreciate you all so, so much and everything that you do for our church. Like It is phenomenal. We have the best church ever. And it's not by accident. It's because of all the work that you guys put into it. And we appreciate it so much. And we also brought finger foods. There's tons of food. So everybody stay after church. Extend a fellowship with finger foods and desserts and things like that. And if you guys are comfortable, I would like to pray for you guys, if that's okay. So if everyone wants to extend a hand, I would love to just pray over the pastors. Because they're just so important to us. So I just, I hope this, sorry, I'm so uncomfortable. So, <laughs> But I love you guys so much. <laughs> okay. Dear Lord. We just want to thank you so much for the strong leadership that we have in our church. You have placed these beautiful people in our lives, not by accident, but for a reason, because they are exactly who we need to lead us and guide us. And Lord, I pray that you just bless them, bless them in all their endeavors, and we bless them with everything that you have, Lord, that you just lead them and guide them, and that they carry out your plan for them, Lord. 
And we just hope that everything that they do comes to prosper. And we just pray that every time that the enemy is in our way, Lord, that you just help them fight it, that you're there behind them, Lord, carrying their burdens, carrying their problems, and letting them know that we as a church, Lord, are here for them too, to help them carry their problems like we carry theirs, Lord. And I just thank you so much for them. Amen. Hey, uh, those of you part of the church know how much I hate Pastor Appreciation Sunday or month. Um, (laughs) It's not that I don't like to be appreciated, I do. I just feel like you all do so much all year long. But this is really, really cool. And thank you for that. And thank you for all the the gift cards and the nice words. And I I do feel appreciated. I know Cherish does. And that, that is special. So thank you. We love you all. This has been a crazy year, hasn't it? And uh, I'm just so glad I get to be here. Yeah. Amen. 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 So give God praise for that. Give God praise for Pastor Kevin, too. All right, I'll be really quick. Uh, but I just want to say that several years ago, I had Julian in children's church. She was actually the the good little girl that's in children's church, the one that wants to be the good one, you know. And uh, she was she was in there. I was a young believer, just learning how to teach the Bible to children, and there she was in there, and she made it easy easier for me. And you know, Andy Hell's kids they like to smack the puppets in the head, <laughs> and had a lot of fun. I don't know where they got that attitude from, but no clue. But um, yeah, it was great, but this past Wednesday, um, it was really neat because I got to see Julian being this young believer, learning how to teach the Bible, and she was teaching children's church Wednesday night, and it was just kind of neat seeing it go uh, full circle there, uh, just seeing that, you know, because sometimes as a teacher, you get out there and you start thinking, I'm wasting my time sometimes. It's like, am I just wasting my time? And I got to see a little bit of the fruit of of everything that we had done years ago, and now I got to see Julian uh, teaching the children. It was just really neat. Um, a couple of announcements, and I'll hurry up. We have uh, the children's church, the practice, the Christmas play practice after church. We're not actually doing a practice practice. We're going to hand out scripts. We're going to talk just a few minutes. It'll be very brief, I promise, and we'll give out a few scripts. And you guys can get familiar with what we're doing. Um, we're also, the, the play itself won't take but 25 to 30 minutes at best. And uh, we want to know if anybody wants to do any Christmas specials. If anybody has any children that want to sing a Christmas special or do anything like that, get with uh, Cherish back there. And Cherish will uh, start lining that up and getting that set up too. So we'll, we have room for songs before and after the play. Um, with that being said, did I forget anything? All right, with that being said, uh, would all the children come up front here? All the children. Please run fast. <laughs> run fast, trip, fall. It'd be awesome. <laughs> all right, we're all up here. <laughs> we're up front. All right, and we are a church that has lots of children. Lots of beautiful children. All right, so out of all the kids here, which one's the meanest kid in this bunch? What? Oh, they're they're. <laughs> Emily's the meanest. Well, I was going to ask the meanest kid in this bunch to pray. Are you good to pray? Whoa. All right. Do I have a volunteer from the children that would like to pray for the children's church? Are you going to make a cat noise? Yeah. Okay, not you. <laughs> you or you? Which one wants to pray? Both of them. Both. We'll come over here. You can both stand together. All right, children. Here's the microphone. You got to. Who wants to pray for the children's church? All right. We'll let you first. Okay. <laughs> she just stepped in. Go ahead. Um, 
I am praying for Mama, and because because I love Mama, <laughs> and I want, and, and because because I just love it because. I love it every time because I love my brother. Amen. 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 I'm praying for my family and friends and all my and all my family and I love them so much. Thank you. Now pray for the church. I pray for everyone here. And I have I wish they have a good day, a good time, and a good time ever. Amen. All right, you guys can go on to class. Run as quickly as you want, as fast as you can. Run, run, run. Run, run, run. There is no second place. All right. And with that, I believe that I got to pray. Okay, almost forgot to do that. All right, um, guys, we are going to pass the baskets for the prayer requests, and if you have a physical offering, you guys uh, know if you've been here that we give through the app, or you can put a tithe or offering in the basket. Um, we are a church that supports a lot of missions. If you have any questions of where this money goes, it... Uh, it, you just come and ask us and we, we were we were just an open open book and we will let you know where all the money goes um, so if you guys would bow your heads and pray with me we'll pray over the offering Lord we thank you for this wonderful day we thank you that uh, you have given so much to us that we're able to give Lord we thank you that we are uh, in a country that has so much abundance Lord we understand that with the abundance that you bless us with in this country, that we have a responsibility, Lord, to reach out to those, uh, our brothers and sisters, and those in need uh, that are in less fortunate situations, in, in poverty in other countries, Lord, in persecution, Lord, and those locally that have not, Lord, that we we need to give to uh, so that we can, as a church body, reach out to the community and to the needs. Lord, we just thank you for that, God, that uh, we just ask that those who have not to give, Lord, that you would bless them, that, that, that we would uh, notice if our brothers and sisters are in need, Lord, that we would be able to help them too. And Father, we just thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. And as far as prayer requests goes, can't forget those. We have to um, remember that we have a God that intervenes. Right, And if you have needs, or you know anybody that has needs, or you have a pastor sitting in front of you with a wig on, <laughs> it makes it very hard to concentrate. <laughs> oh my goodness. You want to look over here. All right, so, um, our, God, our God changes things. So let's pray before I look at Pastor Matthew again with this wig on. <laughs> Lord, we thank you for being so good to us, God. We thank you uh, that you are the God that intervenes in our life, that changes things, Lord, that, that if we need, uh, you know, things can be going one way and all you have to do is speak it, Lord, and the whole situation is changed immediately. Lord, you, you control the weather. You control every molecule on this planet. Lord, every, uh, like we sung earlier, the breath in our lungs. Lord, we know that everything is in your hands, and we just trust your will with it today. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, now, Pastor Big Hair, please come up. <laughs> Thank you. Test, test, there we go. Pastor Big Hair, that's me. I'm, th I'm grateful that Wanda is helping me with these. I don't know how, don't, there may be an unlimited supply of these. So this may go on for weeks and months, years to come. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you can see that picture from there. Uh, you know, I know I'm wearing a wig, but um, 
it, it is amazing how it came in so curly this week. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> it's like, you know, they say, they say when you have chemo, it can come back really different. Every week is so different. It's just amazing <laughs> how that happened. <laughs> um, and seriously, um, I was talking, I had my mom and dad over for a really late birthday dinner last night, and I was showing them on the app, and you know, we have all the sermons from those last sermon series on the app, and also on there, under the sermon section, there's a section that says Pastor Matthew Chapman, and it's got the videos on there that I sent out when I was first sick, letting you know what was going on and things like that. I don't know how much longer I want to leave those on there because when I look at them, I'm a little sad <laughs> how I look. Um, but it is interesting to look and see in just a short amount of time, kind of things weren't looking so good, but how much better uh, things are today. And I just give God praise for that and for these wigs that are entertaining for me if for nobody else. Um, <laughs> but would you just give God praise for all he's done? We just give him praise. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And look at that. Isn't that amazing? Amen. Thank you for this. This is really cool. I will frame that. I noticed someone said they love Pastor Kevin on there. <laughs> so I do look a lot like you. They probably just <laughs> didn't realize that was me. <laughs> but they, they do love you as well. So amen. <laughs> I thought that was great. All right. So um, let's go ahead and turn in your Bibles this morning. If you have your Bibles with you or on your phone, whatever you're using, to Revelation, and I'm going to just read a few verses throughout the message today. Revelation 4, uh, starting verse 1, and then also I'm going to read in Revelation uh, 19, verse 16 as well. So let's just read, and then I'll open in prayer. I forgot to pray for the persecuted church earlier, so I'll cover that in the sermon, in the prayer over the sermon here in just a minute. So uh, they were not forgotten for long. Is my hair messed up now? <laughs> I, I've got a little bit right here that I, my, my wife is telling me I need to get a haircut so uh, amen I'm glad to need a haircut it's going to have to come soon alright Revelation chapter 4 uh, starting verse 1 after these things I looked and behold a door standing open in heaven and the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me saying come up here and I will show you things which must, must take place after this. Immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. He who sat there was like a jasper and a sardius stone in appearance. And there was a rainbow round the throne in appearance like an emerald. Can you imagine a circular rainbow around the throne in appearance like an emerald? And Revelation 19, verse 16. And he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for um, just the awesomeness of who you are. I thank you, Lord, that you are the King of Kings and you are the Lord of Lords and that you rule, you reign over everything and everyone, and there is nothing that is beyond the scope of your authority. We thank you for that. Thank you for this entire series on the identity of God, and uh, I pray that you've shown some things to all of us about who you are and cause us to see our life through your eyes differently. And, and I do want to pray for the persecuted church today. For those that we are affiliated with that are involved with the persecuted church in India and the Philippines and, and Egypt and Ghana and all these other nations that we support or monthly we are giving financially to these missionaries around the world that are in hard to reach places for you. I pray that you will strengthen them today. I pray that you will provide for them what they need. I, I pray that you will multiply their ability to reach people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. We pray for those that we don't know in countries that are suffering for the gospel today. I pray that you will strengthen them. And the thing that I have learned through studying the persecuted church, they don't ask for them to be delivered from their situation, but they ask for you to give them strength to persevere. And I pray, Lord, for that for them today. 
that they will know the strength, they will know the power of God, given the ability to push through whatever they face and to give you glory and that others will come to know you because of their witness for you. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So I've been preaching through the identity of God. This is the ninth sermon that I have preached, the eleventh altogether. Uh, Andy did one on the immutability of God and Kevin on the creator God. So eleven sermons altogether on the identity of God all the way back to the beginning of August when I had no hair until now. And, and so we've talked about God being good, just, mercy, omnipresent, omniscient, omnipotent, grace, immutable, creator, forever, faithful, holy love. Today I want to talk about the sovereignty of God. The ser today's sermon is called God Rules. God Rules rules. And the scripture I just opened up with in Revelation 4 talks about God sitting on a throne with a, with a rainbow, a circular rainbow around. God rules upon the thigh of Christ that's referenced in Revelation 19, a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. When John the Baptist started preaching, it tells us in Matthew 3 verse 2, he says, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. When Jesus began his first message in Matthew chapter 4, verse 17, he said the same thing. Repent, the kingdom of God is at hand. I think we struggle, and Cherish and I have talked about this a little bit over the last couple days. We struggle with this idea of the sovereignty of God, the, the kingship of God. We, we don't live in a country that is ruled by a king. We live in a democratic republic where we have freedom to, to vote people in and vote people out. We, we, we don't live in a country where someone just has all, a, a complete authority because of you know, who they were born to. You know, England sort of has that, but even now it's not really. The, 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 the queen is sort of a figurehead. Uh, the, the parliament really runs the country. So th there are countries that are still run by a king or a queen or a, a dictator, but usually those are places that we don't think too highly of, like North Korea and some of those types of places. And, and so we're not really familiar with this idea of a sovereign king who rules over everything completely and totally. And so I think it's a little hard for us to grasp this idea that God completely, absolutely rules. The, the wonderful thing is that he is beyond just a benevolent dictator. He is a God who rules, who loves us so much that he gave his son for us. So he's not a, a ruler that just, you know, arbitrarily does whatever he wants, whether we like it or not, or, or whether it's in our best interest or not. He's a ruler that loves us, that truly, truly understands us and knows us, and is able to move in our lives in ways that he sees fit to guide and direct. But the thing that, that we have to understand about all the identity of God, all these different attributes, is that God sees things and knows things so far beyond what we know, so far beyond what we understand. And, and so there are things that he, he, he makes up his mind to, to allow this or to allow that or to cause this or to cause that. And, and, and sometimes we see miracles in one person's life that we don't see in another. And we don't understand necessarily why these things happen. But God is sovereign he rules, and he rules to the ultimate conclusion. See, he knows ultimately what is going to happen based on all these other things that take place. And as he is sovereign, as he is king, as he is word, his word is law. You know, the reason why we believe the things we do is because God said it. His word is law. What, because he said it is why we believe it. I don't have to understand it. I don't have to like it. I don't even have to agree with it. Because he said it, it is law. He is sovereign. He rules. He is absolute. There is nothing that he said that is not the way it will be. It is the way it's going to be. In fact... The kingdom of God is a concept that Jesus talked about all through his ministry, and it's all through the New Testament over 80 times. 
In the New Testament, the kingdom of God, that phrase is mentioned. We are part of the kingdom of God. We live under a king who knows us, who understands us, but has supreme authority. I've shared this with you before, but one of my favorite sayings from my teenage years is God has an attitude. He thinks he's God. <laughs> he can, thinks he can do whatever he wants, whenever he wants, however he wants to do it. He's God. <laughs> and he truly can do that. His word is law. You know, we talked about a few weeks ago about God being omnipotent, which means He's all-powerful. There is nothing too hard for God to do. But the word sovereignty means not only does He have all power, but He has all authority. He has the right to use His power however He wants to use it. This is something that, again, is, is a little challenging for us. Not easy for us, and we don't necessarily like it. We don't like it, but it is the way that it is. I've got a quote here from, uh, from Spurgeon, one of the famous preachers of years ago. He's got two words in here I didn't know, so I had to look them up. Um, yeah, I'll read them anyway. But he says, Men will allow God to be everywhere except on His throne. They will allow Him to be in His workshop to fashion worlds and to make stars. They will allow Him to be in His almondry, which that's one I had to look up. Don't, I can't remember what it was. To dispense His alms and bestow His bounties. They will allow Him to sustain the earth and bear up the pillars thereof, or light the lamps of heaven, or rule the waves of the ever-moving ocean. But when God ascends His throne, His creatures then gnash their teeth and we proclaim an enthroned God and His right to do as He wills with His own, to dispose of His creatures as He thinks well, without consulting them in the matter. Then it is that we are hissed and execrated. That's another word I didn't know. And then it is that men turn a deaf ear to us. For God is on His throne, is not the God that they love. But it is God upon the throne that we love to preach. It is God upon His throne whom we trust. God rules. I want to declare to you today that God rules. He rules over everything. Every detail of your life. Everything that's going on in our nation and around the world. God rules. He reigns over everything. There is nothing that escapes His authority. There is nothing that escapes His power. That can be a difficult thing for us to process when things don't go the way that we prayed that they would. But it doesn't change the fact that He is sovereign. He rules. He reigns over everything. There is Everything is under His authority. That should give you comfort. That should give you strength. To know that when you go through things that turn out great, that God did that. That God had a hand in that. When you go through things that don't turn out the way you pray, that somehow God knows and understands and has a purpose beyond what I see. Because if He's a God who loves me, there are things that He is doing that I don't understand. He rules. He did not mistake. He didn't trip over. He didn't oversleep one morning and not realize what was happening to you. He is totally aware and totally engaged and totally in control of what happens in this world. The kingdom of God. We live in a kingdom with a king. Amen? And I just wave your hand and say, thank you, Lord, for the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And so if we talk about then the sovereignty of God, and I want to go just a little bit into something that has be become a, a, a very um, contested topic in our nation or around the world and throughout history is the concept of sovereignty and free will. Sovereignty and free will. Joshua chapter 24 verse 15 says, And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. Choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. 
There are two main thinkings when it comes to sovereignty of God and, and free will. It's Calvinism and Arminianism. It's, Calvinism basically says that God's ordered some to be saved and some to be lost, and He picked and chose which is which, and there's nothing you can do about it. Arminianism, that's a good tongue twister, says that God control, God's control is limited by our free will. And, and so I struggle with both of these concepts. Uh, the, our Calvinism says that there is limited atonement, that God only died on the cross for certain ones, but not for everybody. Arminianism believes in unlimited atonement, that it's for everybody that he died. But the way that those that believe in Arminianism kind of get around this whole sovereignty and free will, they say, well, God knows everybody that's going to choose him, and so he chooses the ones that are going to choose him. And that's the ones that become part of his family. And I struggle with that too. Because why would God wait to know what I'm going to do to decide what he's going to do? <laughs> if he's sovereign, he does what he wants to do when he wants to do it. And I do believe as the Bible talks about divine election and all this pre predestination, there, it does seem that there are some that just God just moves for them in ways he doesn't move for others. And I, and I don't fully understand, but again, he's sovereign and he does what he wants how he wants to do it. And, and so for me, that doesn't come down to whether he's picked you or picked someone else. It just comes down to he knows. And he does things that he understands more than we do. So, so if God is sovereign, then he does whatever he pleases. And I, as I studied this subject, and A.W. Tozer does a great job at balancing these two the sovereignty of God with Calvinism and the, and the free will with Arminianism, it, it brings the two to a balance. And I, I like the way he describes it. And I want to share an example of how he described it in a second. But in his sovereignty, in God's sovereignty, he gave us limited freedom. And so I believe in free will. I believe that we have to decide to follow the Lord. I believe we have to come to Him. We have to say yes to Him. I, I believe that Jesus died on the cross for everybody. His desire is for none to perish. Amen? But God so loved the world. That's everybody. That He gave His only begotten Son. And so we must respond to Him. I believe in free will. But I also believe that there is a limit to that. It's not unlimited free will. And the way that A.W. Tozer describes it in his chapter on sovereignty of God, he talks about a cruise ship. And I've been on a cruise ship once, back when our honeymoon, and it was great. We went on this cruise ship, cruise ship and if you, ever been, if you haven't been, you should go. Because once you get on that thing, anything you want to do is already paid for. And so you could walk around, we would go, go get ice cream and just walk off. <laughs> like we were stealing it. <laughs> It was great. If you wanted pizza at midnight, you just walk up to the pizza place or call them and they'd bring it to your door and no charge for it. It's all covered. If you want to go to some shows, they had shows and you know, you could do all that or you just sit on the deck and look at the waves. You could do whatever you wanted to do. And so, as A.W. Tozer describes this balance of, of sovereignty and free will, he says, it's like we are on this ship and within the confines of this ship, we can do anything we want. We have total freedom to sleep in or get up and go to church. <laughs> we, can, you know, we can decide to eat pizza or we can eat filet mignon. We can, we can interact with people that we want to interact with and not interact with those we don't. We, we can move around on that ship as much as we want, but we cannot determine the destination of that ship. When that ship leaves, our ship left New Orleans, it was on its way to somewhere in Mexico. I forget where we went. Cozumel, that's where it was. When it left New Orleans, it was going to Cozumel. There was nothing I could do about it. I could not change the direction of that ship. It was going where it was going. Now, within the confines of that ship, I could move around. I could make some decisions. I could, I could do what I wanted to do on a given day. But I could not change the direction of the ship. And so when we look at God's sovereignty, we look even at the, the Garden of Eden. He gave Adam and Eve the choice to obey what he said or not. And of course they chose wrong and caused the, the fall to come into the, into the earth. But all the way through history, we have this opportunity within certain confines to decide to do what God wants for our life. 
we have the freedom to decide. But we cannot change the destination. All of us are going to a port called death. Every one of us will reach that port one day. Different times or places than others. It's the choices that we made on that trip that determine where we go when we reach our port. And so, although we have freedom to make decisions in our life and we think that we can do whatever we want, there comes a day of reckoning with all of us one day when a sovereign God will say, I knew you, welcome into my family, or I never knew you, depart from me. Those who practice lawlessness. It's the choices that we make that determine where we go when we reach the port, the final destination. See, God is eternally minded. We are, we are living in time and we think of things time related. We think of things just, you know, based on the, the, the world that we know, but God is eternally minded. He's not thinking of things based on time. He's thinking of things based on eternity. And what God is looking for is people that made choices to serve Him, to please Him, so that when they're in heaven, they want to be there. <laughs> and they truly followed Christ on the ship before they got there. This is an important thing to understand, and I'm trying to give you a little bit of doctrine in here as well to help you understand how to answer this topic of sovereignty versus free will. I believe that everyone that is in heaven chose to be there. And everyone that is in hell also chose to be there. They may not have chose that destination, but they chose the journey. They chose the path that led them to that place where God gave the final rule about where they would spend the rest of eternity. So I believe that we can join together and agree that God is sovereign, but also believe in free will and join those two together. And we use our will to decide to determine His will and to make our mind up to say yes to a God who ultimately rules and reigns everything anyway. The Bible says that one day every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I would rather do that when I have a choice to do that. Amen? I would rather do that now when I can, when I can decide that I want to rather than, decide, than have to do it because I have no choice eventually. John 3 verse 18 says this, He who believes in Him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Ultimately, that's the decision you've got to make. Do you believe in who he is? Do you believe in what he has done for you? Do you believe in the cross and the, and the price paid for your life? Are you living in a way that seeks to please him and to honor him and the choices that you make today and, and the choices and decisions you make day after day, you're going to make some mistakes, right? You're going to go down some of the wrong paths, but is your heart to please the one that gave his life for you? Is that your desire? Is that what you want? Then if you believe in him, then you are not condemned. And I believe we can approach that port that we will all reach one day with confidence. Amen? We can approach that port. We, can, we all, we're all ahead to knowing that, 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 that we know the one who gives the ultimate decision about eternity for us. So sovereignty and free will can go hand in hand. We're on the ship together. Amen. Thank God for the opportunity to make some decisions because what he is looking for is for us to decide that we love him and that we want to please him, that we want to honor him. He doesn't looking, he's not looking to make us do anything. He's looking for us to accept him, but ultimately he will decide. So the kingdom of God is we are in the sovereignty and free will. And lastly, I just want to just tie this together. We are now, we are now living in his kingdom. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 10, it says, the beginning of the Lord's Prayer, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth 
as it is in heaven. It also says in Colossians 1 verse 13, He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love. We are already in the kingdom of God. We're not waiting to get to heaven to be in the kingdom of God. We are already, if we have turned and, and committed our life to Christ to follow him, we are already in his kingdom. He is already our king. Amen. He is already our Lord. Hallelujah. He is already ruling over my life. And so that's why I make up my mind that I want to do things, to, to make decisions, live my life in a way that honors him and pleases him because I'm already in his kingdom. He's already my king. I'm not waiting for heaven to acknowledge him as that. I'm doing that now. Amen? Amen. He is already the king of kings, the Lord of lords. He already rules and reigns. And, and, and so there are things that I, I face in my life that are bigger than me. And, you know, and I've been through some things this year that were bigger than me. And I just, see, I, 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 no, I can't tell you that every day was easy, that I didn't have some struggles. But, I, I, but I, I, I knew already that God was ruling over my life and whatever happened, I knew he was doing it for my good. And so I... My prayer was, Lord, to help me to trust you, to, to, to believe in you, to, 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 to know that no matter what happens, I mean, there was a chance as we be, began to look at, you know, what treatment I would need, and as I lost all this weight, I, as you know, I, I, I might be gone. I might be gone. This was, this was something we were looking at and, and, and trying to wrap our heads around. This could be it for me. But no matter what, I knew God was in charge. I knew he was ruling and reigning over my life and whatever best was best for his kingdom, not necessarily for me. You know, sometimes I think that we look at things so personal. You know, it's like, well, God's going to do things that are good for me. No, not necessarily. He's going to do things that are good for his kingdom. What is good for his kingdom, for his purposes, for reaching more, his desires to reach more for him. And so there are things that I may suffer that I don't understand but I'm still in his kingdom. He is still my king. And if we will learn to trust him through everything we walk through, we will see that God has not left us. We're not waiting for heaven. We can know the identity of God and we can live our life as God is ruling over me. I don't have to wait till I get to the port to suddenly bow my knee. But as I'm traveling on that cruise ship, I can already bow my knee to him. I can already surrender my life to him. And I'm not waiting for something good to happen before I do that. I'm looking for whatever happens in my life to say, God, I surrender to you. I trust you. I believe that you're in charge. And somehow you're going to bring me to where you want me to be. One day every knee will bow we can bow when we choose to bow before we get to the port. Amen? Revelation 7 verses 9 through 10 says this, After these things I looked, and behold, a great multitude which no one could number, of all nations, tribes, peoples, and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, white shirts, <laughs> palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Heaven will be filled with people from every culture, every nation, as far as the eye can see, innumerable numbers of people who chose on that cruise ship, on the way from, from one port to another, to serve Him. A God who is sovereign, a God who rules, a God who reigns. Hallelujah. They voluntarily decided this is the God they wanted to honor and decide to serve. It's a beautiful thing. I wanted to read just a little portion of A.W. Tozer's book on the sovereignty of God. He says this, a man who is with God can't lose because God can't lose. God is the sovereign God who is having his way in the whirlwind and the storm. And when the storm is over and the whirlwind of history has blown itself out, the God who sat on the throne with the rainbow around it will be seated on that throne. Beside him will be a ransomed company who chose to go his way. Heaven will not be filled 
with slaves. I like that. Heaven will not be filled with slaves. God rules. He is sovereign. Whatever He wants, He's going to get. He has an attitude. He thinks He's God. But in His sovereign will, He decided to give you a little bit of free will to decide to say yes to Him. Ultimately, He's in charge. But aren't you glad that He gave you the opportunity to not be a slave? Aren't you glad He gave you the, the freedom to accept the price paid for you and to live your life in a way to please Him because you want to? Aren't you glad about that? But be included in that, though, is to remember that it's not up to me. Ultimately, it's not up to me. I'm not going to stand before God and make excuses. I'm not going to stand before the great white throne judgment or the judgment seat of Christ and say, well, God, look what Andy did. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm nowhere near as bad as he is. <laughs> Why don't you let, give me a pass, God? Because if, you, if you're going to let Andy in, you've got to let me in, right? <laughs> no, we can't argue with God that way. Ultimately, he's in charge. He is sovereign. He rules. He reigns. But He's given us the opportunity to choose to accept Him as our ruler. So thank God He's not a dictator that just rules with a rod of iron. Thank God He is a dictator. But He's someone that wants you... This is the crazy thing about God. He rules, right? He can have whatever He wants anytime He wants. But what He wants is you to love Him. What He wants is for you to desire to please Him. Acts 2 verse 21 says, Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Everybody that calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And Revelation 22 verse 17 says, Whosoever will may come. But then in John 15, 16, it says this, You did not choose me but I chose you. This is a God who could have whatever He wanted, could pick whoever He wanted to be on His team. He chose you. He chose you. It's crazy, isn't it? I mean, look at yourself. Why would He choose you? <laughs> that don't make any sense. <laughs> but He did. But He's asking you also to choose Him. Isn't that an easy decision to make? To choose the one that ultimately determines your destiny? I mean, doesn't that make logical sense? You know, I mean, Stephen Early, if, if I'm standing over your head with a huge, you know, big old axe and your head's on a, on a, a post or something and I've got it over your head and there's nothing you can do to get away, I'm assuming you're strapped down, there's no way you can move, nothing. And I say, look, all you got to do is say you like me. And I won't chop your head off. <laughs> what, what would you say? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that'd be an easy decision to make, right? And so, a God who ultimately determines where we're going to spend eternity is asking you to choose Him. To say yes to Him. Knowing that He knows your heart. He knows it's not between you and anybody else, between you and Him. He knows if that decision is real or not. And when your ship gets to port, He's the one that's going to say, welcome, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. I'm looking forward to that. Amen, aren't you? I'm living in eternity now. And I think over this last year and a half or so, I've come to grips with that more. Uh, we are not waiting for eternity to begin. I'm living in it now. I'm already serving a king. And I want my life to please him. Because he wants me to. That's what he's asking of me. And so I say, 
Yes, sir. Help me to do that better. Help me to do that more. Help me to obey you more. To please you more. And it's not because I'm in fear. I'm not fearful of where I'm going to spend eternity. I am sure of where I'm going to spend eternity. But I just know that he's the one that decides and I just want to be on his team. <laughs> it's an easy decision. It's a logical decision. Amen. Can we stand up together? Worship church or team or at least Zach, whoever is going to come, come. And I, I just want to close out this service this morning by giving you an opportunity. It's, it's almost 12 now, but we gained an hour last night, so we got plenty of time. <laughs> I want to give you an opportunity to respond to him. And there may be some here this morning that have been struggling with, do they even want to say yes to God as their king or not? There are some of you that have kind of been thinking, well, you can determine your own destiny. You've been thinking, I can decide what I want to do, and bless God, I'm going to live I want to live. And maybe hadn't thought about that there was a porch you're going to come to one day where someone's going to make that decision for you. And so there may be someone here that just wants to say yes to God and I want to surrender my life to Him. Make Him my King. Or there may be others that have already made that decision. You already are in His kingdom. You already know that. But you're walking through some things that you don't understand. You're walking through some things that you don't know why this is happening the way that it is. And maybe this morning you just want to commit your life to Him again. You want to surrender to Him again and say, God, You're sovereign. You rule. I don't understand why this is happening in my life. But I know You love me. And I know You're good. And I know there are things that You see that I don't. And so for some of you, you want to surrender your life to Him just to maybe for the first time. But for some of you, you want to continue that ongoing surrender to Him in the middle of what you're walking through. However that hits you, I may not have phrased that right, but however that hits you, as we sing this last song, would you just come and kneel or stand at this altar? Something I, I've talked to people about this so many times. What God is looking for in your life is surrender. He's looking for surrender. And it's not surrender because He pinned you to the ground and there was nothing you could do. It's surrender because you recognize His Lordship. And I just want to serve you, O oh God. He's not going to force you to surrender to Him. But He's looking for your surrender. And so that may be in your whole life or maybe in one small part. Are you willing to surrender to Him? To surrender to the King of kings and Lord of lords. A sovereign God who ultimately will get His way. But who loves you so much that He gave His life for you that you might be free. Here, i got to stop, but let me just say this. The rules that are in the Word of God are not because He's a mean God. And not because He just likes to be things, make things hard for you. It's because He knows if you live His way and trust Him that it will be the best for you that it could possibly be. He knows that. So when we surrender to Him, we're not surrendering to a God who is making life hard. We're surrendering to a God who will bring us through whatever we face and will give us His strength to go through it. His love, His grace, and His mercy are unlimited towards us. It's a beautiful thing. And it's very logical. Let's surrender to a God who will have His way anyway. Let's choose to do that. Amen. 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 I want to pray. And then if you just come, just take, spend a minute at the altar. Don't, we won't take long. I thank you, Lord, for your goodness. I thank you, Lord, for your sovereignty. I thank you, Lord, that you rule and you reign. And you can have whatever you want. And in your sovereignty, you decided to give 
us the ability to be forgiven, to be washed, to be cleansed, to be set free from every bondage in our life. You didn't have to do that. You did that because you loved us. You did that because you decided you set your love upon us. You just made up your mind that we were worth it to you. Thank you for that. And thank you for giving us some limited freedom in our life that, that we have the opportunity to say yes to a God who will decide ultimately anyway. I pray, oh God, this morning that all of us, every one of us in some shape or form will surrender to you in a new way, in a fresh way, in some area of our life. Give our heart and life to you. To a God who rules anyway. But who loves us so much. I thank you, Jesus. I praise you, Jesus. As they sing, would you come? Surrender to the Lord today. Surrender over your entire life. Or in some small part, would you, would you come and surrender to Him today? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Some of you have been wrestling with coming to the altar to begin with. This is a good day to do that. Just step out. Step out and do it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord.
situation. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you are in charge. You are sovereign. You rule over everything. And out of that, we have freedom, Lord, to walk in you and to walk in safety in your presence, Lord. We thank you. We give you the glory and the honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Awesome word, Pastor Matthew. Thank you. Want to encourage everybody, come out on Tuesday. What happens here at this church on Tuesday? Somebody? Youth. Study. Want to encourage y'all, come out, take part in midweek service or beginning of week service, whatever we want to call it. Encourage y'all to come and learn about God. There's something for everybody. Y'all have an awesome day. Love you. Mean it. Gosh.